Every season has a theme. 2008 is all about whether Kilkenny can record a first All-Ireland three in a row in nearly 100 years. Brian Cody's team have strengthened their grip on the McCarthy Cup over the past two years. Now they're poised to move ahead of old rivals Cork at the top of the Roll of Honour with 31 titles. So who are the main contenders to stop the champions, writing another chapter in the county's glorious history? Every season starts hopefully. Tipperary have a new manager in Liam Sheedy and with renewed confidence push on to a first league title in seven years. Will it be their year to translate underage success onto the senior stage? Then there's Waterford. Under Justin McCarthy, the county has established itself as one of the top three teams in the country. The loss of five All-Ireland semi-finals has eaten into self-belief and morale. Yet no one could have envisaged the roller coaster season ahead. Then there's the eternal mystery of Galway. With Gerlock Nan in his second year in charge and Joe Canning, the exciting new star of hurling in the team, there was optimism that the cycle of underachievement of the past two decades could at last be broken. Longtime rivals Cork are rebuilding under the experienced management of Gerald McCarthy. Once again, there has been tension within the county, and another dispute with their county board means the Rebels have missed some of their league matches. But the last time this happened, Cork were galvanised for the following championship. And with Cork's place at the top of Hurling's role of honour in jeopardy, no team will have greater motivation. Having opened their season with a majestic win over Offaly, champions Kilkenny are hot favourites. Wexford took two matches to shake off Dublin, and to say that they'll have to raise their game is like saying Usain Bolt's competitors need to hurry. Then again, it was in the previous Olympic year of 2004 that Wexford last shocked their powerful neighbours. Referee Barry Kelly from Westmeath gets the 113th Leinster Hurling final underway. And it is Wexford who won the toss, playing from right to left in the first half. Straight away, some early pressure here for Maliki Travers to deal with. Sent long down the field, down as far as PJ Nolan, who's drifted back a little bit. Inside towards Banville, losing this time, however, to JJ Delaney. First ball to come their way, and straight away, JJ Delaney puts down a marker. A little bit of breeze maybe favouring Kilkenny in the opening half here. Richie Parr going at a solo and darting through, doing well, expecting the challenges, shorting the grip of the stick and putting it over the bar. Good point by Richie Parr. And he missed the semi-final because of injury, but he's back. Tommy Welch, he's played everywhere and played with distinction everywhere. He's robbed this time by Willie Doran. Helped there by Owen Quigley, playing at midfield. Forward it goes towards Stephen Doyle. Doyle, 45 metres and a little bit out from goal. Cross to the midfielder, David Redmond this time, having a fire, having a shot, and he fires it over the bar. Great point by David Redmond from Olaf the Dallas. Really good work by the midfielder who began the campaign at top of the right, but he's much, much happier out around midfield. And Dalton fires it a good 50, 60, 70 metres in. All the way in, great take in there with difficulty. And that is uh, going to be a penalty, I think, because the referee blew the whistle. Watch this high ball going in here again here. And it's Owen Larkin who makes the wonderful catch here in the air. And the referee immediately pointing to the penalty. Well, here's a glorious opportunity for Henry Shefflin. To add to his goals tally, into the back of the net. 20 goals scored by Henry Shefflin from the penalty, coming in the ninth minute. A real rasp at that time, and there was nothing those on the goal line could do about it. Comes to the left half back, who's PJ Delaney from Fenians. Back down through the centre once again, caught there by Martin Comerford, transferred inside towards Owen Larkin, and Larkin puts it over the bar. The man who was taken down for the penalty gets his first point of the match from play just a minute or so later, and it is now 1-4 for Kilkenny, three points for Wexford. 
Michael Cavan to put under pressure. Willie Doran coming forward here. Wexford needing a score. Inside towards Banville. Plenty of players around him. He hand passes it. Goes after it himself. It's still Banville trying to plow his way through. Here comes Jacob. Rory Jacob with the effort. And Rory Jacob has put it over the bar. Good point by Wexford. One they have needed. They've gone several minutes now without scoring. Just to stay nicely in touch at 1-6 to 4 points. Decent connection into the centre of the park, but coming and racing to take possession is a very confident Char Fitzpatrick. Let's fly. Deadly accurate. Second point of the day for the midfielder and captain. Well, he's having a bumper afternoon. He is, and Ger I've watched Char against Offaly. His work rate and his enthusiasm is unbelievable, but that's a brilliant score, and he made it look so easy. A brilliant catch, little sidestep, and then short grip and over the bar from 70 yards. Stephen Doyle. Looking for support, trying to make the easy pass. Back as far as Michael Jacob. Michael Jacob from uh, fully 90 metres down the field. He's put it over the bar, showing he's lost none of his touch as a forward player, even though he's now back being right half back. So the two Jacobs have done well. Michael, the older of the two brothers, putting this one straight between the posts. Outside here towards Deer Midling. Dean McFerrish forward here. Trying to cut inside. Tommy Woods coming across. Slipping. And the Hurley going out. And well, it was a broken stick, I think, by Deer Midling. Or was it by Tommy Woods? It's Tommy Woods' stick, which was broken. The referee allowed play to continue. And it does. And it's back once again here. The man in the corner, Rory Jacob. Trying to get away from Dalton. Again. Trying to make a better angle for himself. Back towards P.J. Nolan it comes. Trying to step away from trouble. Did brilliantly that time. And P.J. Nolan, can he finish? He can! That is a superb point by P.J. Nolan, his second of the match. And Wexford are turning on the style. Uh, in fairness to Barry Kelly, he had to give Ling the advantage. And he's, pu he's pulling back Tommy Walsh now for the booking. Pressure back on Darren Stamp once again. That's Martin Comerford getting the ball forward. Down into the corner towards Eddie Brennan. Trying to steal a march in here. Power is available. Back inside towards Owen Larkin. Larkin trying to step away from trouble. Looking for a free. Back in it comes. Dangerous moment in there for the Wexford backs. And it's in the back of the net. Eddie Brennan. Eddie Brennan. Goal. goal stands. Third minute of the second half. And he's something of a goal king. But that was one ball that should have been cleared out of danger there. Owen Larkett feeding it in here. Wexford had loads of bodies back, but somehow Eddie Brennan managed to funnel it through and score what is his 19th championship goal. He has a super finish. He had no room at all, but the improvisation there was unbelievable. And... Scooped forward there by Henry Shefflin in as far as Charfitz Patrick. Across towards Eddie Brennan again. He's already got one goal. Looking for latitude. Makes a real angle for himself and hits a great score a point at the start of the second half whatever was said to him he's got the message good ball great delivery inside towards Richie Parr nice kind of ball for a forward that's a good ball forward here an opportunity for another score for Derek Link scored in the first half little hand pass outside here coming on to Eddie Brennan oh another one for Eddie Brennan back of the net all of a sudden it's Kilkenny's game provider Brennan the finisher Joe, that is a brilliant goal he, he went for that he, he just picked there was only one spot he could put that to if you watch it again here just one spot top corner that Fitzhenry couldn't get and he stuck it away terrific goal good challenge Jackie Tyrrell in there Tyrrell winning it again here coming forward Trying to go by Owen Quigley, linking up with Owen Larkin once again. 45 metres out and 40 metres out. This is dangerous for Wexford. Owen Larkin, hand pass outside to Richie Parr. It's another one. Richie Parr, a goal and two points his credit. And once again, Damien Fitzhenry is beaten here. Fourth goal to go past the Duffery Rovers goalkeeper. And this was dangerous on the moment here that Larkin made the inroad on as far as power. A dynamic shot by him. They were throwing earlies at him, but nobody could dispossess Larkin. And that's a great finish. Well, Colin Farrell has just come in for Wexford. He started the match against Dublin in Nolan Park. Coming in place of 
Paul Roach. So it's a much changed Wexford back line. Stephen Doyle letting it all the way in and putting it over the bar. Good play by Stephen Doyle. That's their first score from play in the second half. And it's come in the 23rd minute of the half. Stephen Doyle's first. Just about raises a cheer. Under the dropping ball here is Char Fitzpatrick. He's given a terrific display along with Jackie Tyrrell here in the centre of the park. Fed beautifully forward here towards Eddie Brennan. Went this way and that. Made himself an angle. Got the score. Yeah, and I think that score just sums up the change of the In the first half, they were so one-dimensional. It was high ball in all the time. They wasted an awful lot of possession. But in the second half, every ball has been played in front of their full forward line. And that's where all the scores have come from. And Kilkenny are simply doing as they like. Eddie Brennan across to Martin Comerford. Hasn't scored so far. Could put that right here. He has. Rarely if ever goes a game without getting at least one point. Yeah, great diagonal ball by Eddie Brennan. And as I said earlier, that's what they've been doing in the second half all the, all the time. They haven't wasted one ball. So Brian Cody wants to give everybody an opportunity to share on a glory day once again in the Leinster Championship. This time they're watching Jackie Tyrrell. I wonder where he will be playing when it comes to All-Ireland semi-final time. Wexford under pressure, and it's another one. And this time it's finished by Aidan Fogarty. The matter is usually good for one. Watch as it was followed in here by the fresh man in, anxious to get among the goals, and he usually does. It's a 19-point victory for Kilkenny. All of the damage essentially happening in the second half. Goal after goal, beating Damien Fitzhenry. Kilkenny are in the semi-finals. They've won the Leinster Championship for the 64th time. It's Kilkenny, five goals and 21 points. Wexford, 17 points. The chairman of the Leinster Council, Seamus Howland, a Wexford man, hands over the Bob O'Keefe Cup to James Sharp Fitzpatrick as Kilkenny win the provincial title for the 65th time. The Tipperary and Clare campaigns see them advance to the Munster final. Already, Clare have won more matches in Munster this year than in the entire decade up to now. They are still long shots but have been putting in big scoring totals. Tip are unbeaten all year and on track for a first title in seven years. A full house in Limerick eagerly awaits. still afternoon here in Limerick picked up here smartly by James Woodlock and Woodlock has a go and Woodlock puts it over the bar and Tipperary are leading down towards Mark Flaherty across there goes Paul Curran as well left it behind needs support in there was Eamon Buckley to try and help out one back here again was it picked off the ground by Tony Griffin Griffin plays it forward goes after himself Conor O'Brien stops him comes out here as far as Eamon Corcoran Corcoran under pressure there from Niall Gilligan gets the ball away lots and lots of early pressure on the Tipperary defence here Eamon Buckley cool as you like getting it away here as far as Shane McGrath and McGrath has had such a wonderful season so far all the way down towards Lark Corbett balances it beautifully has a goal and puts it over the bar good point by Lark Corbett and Tipperary have a second point yeah, that's a great play there by, by uh, Shane McGrath. Brilliant ball in, and Larry Corbett has been doing all your fan fantastic first touch here. And made it look very, very easy. He's absolutely in, in unbelievable form this year. That's a great, great start for him. Support required there from Pat Thorne. It comes back. Great blocking by Tipperary. This is John O'Brien. That's deadly accurate, and that's over the bar. And that's the fourth for Tip. Again, it's O'Connell, nicely forward here as far as Dermot McMahon, making inroads, having a go, and putting it into the arms of the goalkeeper, Brendan Collins. Back up once again to the centre of the park. Three against one, and the one was Woodlock. Clare there in numbers, hold on to it. Back from Carmody, spooning it back as far as Colin Lynch. Lynch having a go from 65 metres out, and Lynch has scored his first point of the match. And Clare eat into the temporary lead, it's four points to three. A thrilling start in Portland Royal and Limerick, where both sides are giving it everything, and Clare are coming back. Back forward here as far as Tony Carmody, man who was missing last year. Has a goal, looking for the equaliser, and 
and he's put it over. Superb point by Tony Carmody. Once again into the half forward line it comes. Jerry Quinn there at right half back for Clare. Losing it. Kerwick taking it. Chased by Donlan. It's Kerwick still. Kerwick trying to the grip of the stick and putting it over the bar. First point of the match for Pat Kerwick from Killen All. And he's made it seven points to four. And Tip fans really enjoying the afternoon in Limerick. Broken down towards Conor O'Brien, the young guarder. Held there well. Conor O'Mahony as far as Shane Marr. All on his own, Frank Lowe, it should be his and his. Takes it away, immediately surrounded, leaves it there to Callanan, and Callanan puts it over the bar. That's a mistake by Frank Lowe, and gifting Seamus Callanan the ball, and gifting Tipperary another point, and Frank will know it straight away. You know, the five points behind now, they need to get the next score or two to keep themselves in the game. Missed by Corcoran for Tipperary, but he's got it back second time of asking from his own 45-metre line. Putting the pressure there on Jerry O'Grady. It breaks between Grady and Butler. Breaks on here for Seamus Callanan. Callanan coming in, looking for the goal! And he's crashed it into the back of the net! Wonderful goal by Seamus Callanan. What a time to score your first ever goal in championship hurling. It comes in the 27th minute. And there was a, a moment of consternation in the Clare back line. And Callanan was into a bail of it quickly. You had a stumble there between Owen Kelly and Jerry O'Grady. And the man who profited was the man on the 40 who's got an eye for a goal. And the 20 year old comes in and hits it. Wallops it indeed past Philly Brennan in the Clare goal. It's 110 to five points. Pat Donlan struggling. In there with the stick again, trying to keep it away from the temporary players. This time helped out by his captain, Brian O'Connell. Pat Donlan again, trying to come to Clare's aid. Held on to here. Swept across the field this time cleverly by Owen Kelly. An opportunity there for Shane McGrath, and he's put it over the bar. Point in the first half, point in the second. Wonderful start by Tipperary, and it's one goal and 13 points now to Clare's six points. Dermot Akbahan on the 40, couldn't hold it. Niall Gilligan struggling to get into it. This is Tony Carmody. Again, shooting from distance, and this time it's measured perfectly, and it's over the bar. A second point for Carmody. That's in once again dangerously. Pat Donald reacting, coming across, sweeping block down by Kelly. Almost in again. And O'Connell tries to get it away. Back out, here it comes. Opportunities for John O'Brien to have a go from the wing. It's blocked down well. That was the substitute Gary O'Connell who got in the block. But there's still an opportunity here to inflict further damage and to put it over the bar. And John O'Brien, first point of the second half, third of the match. He's having quite a game. There's two things about the tip forward play today that strike me. One is they're blocking and Harry, and the other is they're, they're throwing the ball around. Obviously, they've worked very, very hard in that. Eamon O'Shea and 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 that's over the bar via Colin Lynch. Second point there for the Lissy Casey Lionheart. Jerry Quinn coming across, trying to help, succeeding. They need everything that can possibly go their way. Gilligan having a go from a huge distance. Is it on target? It is. Great shot. Third point for Gilligan. Yeah, and the switch to Jerry Quinn's centre-back is certainly helping. Touchdown well by Gilligan, intended for Jonathan Clancy, comes to a temporary player instead. Inevitably, it's Conor O'Mahony, who loses it this time to Niall Gilligan. Clare still forcing it. Gilligan has a shot, and Gilligan has put it over. It's down to six points. An amazing match. Don't write off this final just yet. Now, Tip need a score, just to settle things down a little bit. 
Instead, it's Clare who pick up the tempo of the game again with Terry O'Grady. Straight through to the unmarked Jonathan Clancy. He's got a man outside him if he needs it. Clancy's got to go for the score himself. And Clancy fires it over the bar. All of a sudden, this is a transformed banner side. Clancy's first point of the match. It's 116 to 14 points. Pull another way. Tip's lead is now down to five. Which of the two managers? Who will be the most pleased man at the end of the 17th? Pressure on again, and John O'Brien takes it for Tipperary. Tipney to score to settle them down. Oh, it's in the back of the net. That could be the match winner by John O'Brien. 58 minutes. John O'Brien says enough of the dillying and the dallying. It's time to settle this as a tie and to soothe the nerves. And John O'Brien caught it there ahead of the wing-back Gary O'Connell, planted it in the net for his first ever championship goal. Liam Sheedy and the selectors, Michael Ryan and Eamon O'Shea, have got their team absolutely spot on. Back again, into the centre. Opportunity to put it over to John O'Brien for a fourth point. Good hoop that time as Donald was trying to get it away. Great defensive work by Tipperary. The forwards show they can score, but they can also defend and frustrate the opposing backs. Owen Kelly, five for the game so far. He's now got a sixth. He's having a field day. Lynch has gone forward. That's Fergal Lynch to Colin Lynch. They look for a late goal just to try and beat Brendan Cummins. And Fergal Lynch might succeed, he fails to do so. Great stop by the goalkeeper. And Tipperary haven't got it away yet. Carmody's in next. Having a go, trying to drop, hit it. Colin Lynch waiting for to come out to him. 20 metres out, just swear there was only two points in the game. And they have a free. On the 20 metre line, five players on the goal line confronting him. So it's not a penalty. But he's going about it in such a fashion, you sense he is going for the goal. He does, and it's a great save again from Brendan Cummins. He is not to be beaten. Commanding goalkeeping. This is a terrific stop. It is Tipperary who have won the 2008 Monster Hurling Final. It was Tipperary, 221. Claire, 19 points. And Tip going to take the Monster Cup back to the Premier County. It's the 37th ever championship win. The message is clear. Tip our back. A vital match in Thurless. After a limp display against Dublin, could this be the effective end of Cork's great team and the first steps to glory for Galway? By the end of a memorable summer's evening, an enthralled crowd will have seen a great team display and the greatest individual performance of the championship. Into the centre, driven well out of danger this time. Huge one up there all the way. Joe Canning causing the problems. Joe Canning into the back of the net. Wonderful goal. Are gone. Galway get a score, and it's the big man himself. Watch it again here. He calls danger, absolute consternation, turning inside, and a shot that beat Donald O'Cusack once he'd got by Dermot O'Sullivan. And the referee calling aside Donald O'Cusack. And there's a yellow card for the goalkeeper. Let's have a look at what uh, happened where Donald Logue was concerned. Once the uh, goal was scored, he says he took too many steps. Again, it's worked into the centre as far as Fergal Healy. Stopped this time by Sean O'Halpine. And away out of danger. It's part of the attention there of Niall Healy. Getting it away down towards Joe Dean. Joe Dean looking around to see who's available. Looking for the goal as well. Having a shot himself and putting it over the bar. He's lost none of his sparkle and none of his magic over the years. Allowed to run in that time towards Joe Dean by Ben O'Connor, taking his man out with him. This is good play again by the Wizard from Killa. Out towards Ben O'Connor. O'Connor there against Ollie Canning. Back towards Cahill Nocton this time. Cork 
taking a number of passes to finally set up the move, but it results in a very good shot. And the first score of the game for Cahal Nocton. Joe Canning touching it down, they're anticipating, none more so than Damien Hayes. Wants his first score, and Damien Hayes finally gets his first score. Pressure on again, Canning has it, nice release, Kearns beautifully touched down. Should be a score at the end of this, but the angle's getting tight for Hayes. Back to Kearns again, trying to go forward, and he's ha put it into the back of the net. Red, red card for Kuzak. It could be a real turning point of the match. The defence all over the place, and that's where the goalkeeper decided to take him down. So it stays at 1-4 to 8 points, but a penalty coming up, which Joe Canning's going to take. We're in the third minute of injury time. Right into the back of the net. What a penalty by Canning. Forward towards Joe Canning. John Gardner breathing down his neck. Canning, strong, powerful, and deadly accurate. That's 2-6. Ronan Curran to Joe Dean. Little ball moving ahead here as far as Cahal Nocton. Nocton from the angle, and that is a beauty! A second for Cahal Nocton. Niall McCarthy into Dean again. And that carries well, and it's over the bar. Joe Dean gets a second point. Jerry O'Connor. Little hand pass outside here, comes towards Cahal Nocton this time. And Cahal Nocton shots on target! That's three for Cahal Nocton. Not for nothing are Cork known as the Rebels. Into Dean. Again, beating the attempted block. Oh, it's like target practice. It's like when he came into the team for the first time. Into space, Canning's gone after it. So too a couple of the Cork men, Tom Kenny couldn't make it. Joe Canning has, looking to fire this one over the bar from an impossible angle. Oh, it's another superb score by a real coup Cullen of a man. They're all praying from Galway. They don't want to lose. It's lobbed in. They need a goal from somewhere, somewhere to take it. A chance, Kelman. Referee's whistle goes, and Cork have beaten Galway, and they've reached the GAA Hurling Championship quarterfinals. It's Cork, 23 points. Galway, two goals and 15. Cork's rejuvenated challenge comes up against one of the championship's most improved teams. Clare created a succession of chances in the Munster final. If their conversion rate improves, Cork will be in trouble. It's Cork who won the toss and they're going to play from left to right in the first half. Match gets underway. Hurley broken straight away. And Cork trying to launch the opening attack here. An opportunity for Patrick Morgan to have a go from some distance. And he's just put it to the right and he's just put it wide. Straight to Colin Lynch. Linking up here well with his team captain. Brian O'Connell flying forward. This as far as Tony Carmody. Carmody from Ina with a huge one in. And that has gone over the bar. Good start for Tony Carmody and Clare. Once he got control of the situation here, had the confidence and the composure, and that's a lovely score. Down towards Joe Dean, took up a great position. Goes round Frank Lowen there. Does almost too much with it. Looking to try and lay it off now, or looking for an opportunity. Finds Niall McCarthy. Chance of a score from here, and Niall McCarthy inside. The left-hand post and over the bar. Up towards Gilligan. Second time of asking, gets it under control, fires it high and puts it over the bar. That's a second for Niall Gilligan. First to come from play and the fans are happy. Well, they might be because they have a three-point advantage. And Niall Gilligan 
is really causing some trouble. Comes in as far as Joe Dean. Joe Dean looks at the target, has a go, and puts it over the bar. First of the day for Joe Dean. Once Joe Dean gets that type of possession, we saw it last Saturday night, he, he will punish that every time. Towards Dermot McMahon. Ronan Curran allows it to run on, and it does to Gilligan. And again, he could cause problems here. Knifing his way through and firing it over the bar for a third point for Niall Gilligan, the six-mile bridge player. And it's seven points to four, a bit of a gap opening up again. Dermot McMahon catches a beauty, 45 metres out, having a go, that is some point. Brilliant. Dermot McMahon, the scorer, and Clare's ninth point of the first half, comes in the 28th minute. Watch this for fielding. Superb, getting inside, Ronan Curran, and knocking it over the bar. Dermot O'Sullivan racing out for this one, and Dermot O'Sullivan shouldering Colin Lynch out of his way. And that's a bit more like it, and that might get the Cork crowd and the Cork team going. Down to Patrick Horgan, who can't take it this time. Instead, it is Jerry O'Grady, and it's quite an intense battle. So many heroic performances. What about this for his shoulder? He was almost into the front of Colin Lynch that time. <laughs> like the stadium shook. Jerry Quinn with the free. His team ahead by five, all the way in. Beyond Buckman. Oh, it's all the way in, and Nugent was in there. Did he get a touch? Clare's goal comes in the 32nd minute. Yeah, Jar, hard to know if he got a touch, but I'd say he did, or otherwise, you know, we just see it dropping in here. Speculative ball. Oh, yeah, fantastic yeah. touch. Brilliant corner forwards goal. Uh, great goal, Jar. Barry Nugent then, knocking this one into the back of the net. Runs on again this time as far as Gilligan. Gilligan having a go from an angle, and this is a glorious spell for Clare. Timmy McCarthy didn't take it. Horgan tries to come in. Now it's Cahill Nocton trying to take off. Hasn't scored so far. Little hand pass to Timmy McCarthy. McCarthy has a point for the taking. Goes for a goal! Corker back in, and it's 111 to 17. Timmy McCarthy out nothing goals in the 38th minute of this match Cahill Nocton setting it up for him here he's got important goals in the past he's got one here again fourth time ever to find the back of the net this is McCarthy and that is a mistake by Philip Brennan it's given Cork a valuable lifeline the margins down to four Donald Collins Hand pass by McMahon, on as far as Carmody, striking it well, over the bar, that's the response that Clare needed. Up towards Show Dean, races away off his man who's Frank Lowen, Frank Lowen blocks it down well, wasn't too sure where the block was going to end up with that ball, it back with Dean again, little hand pass back, it comes again towards Ben O'Connor, and Ben O'Connor from a distance, puts it high, and puts it over the bar! Pat Donnellan back in again, inside towards Dermot McMahon, this has possibilities, McMahon in, all the way in, it's over the line! Clare's second goal, mightn't have been a thing of beauty, but Dermot McMahon was in there after it in the 47th minute. Well, he showed great commitment and it trickled over the line, but it beat Sean had been and it's 2.14 to 112. Yes, sir, and all this year, Clare have been getting goals at absolutely crucial times, except in the Munster final. How crucial is that one? A bit like a, a pushover try, really. Ben O'Connor ready to take this sideline cut. Making a good connection, it's going to land on the square. Oh, it's off the post and it's in, and it's Frankie Murphy has done it! Kieran Murphy, first touch. We're back to a two point game in another memorable quarterfinal at Semple Stadium. Watch as Ben O'Connor knocked it in. Paul Cronin responded, came off the post, keeper beaten. Kieran Murphy in. Great work by Pat Cronin, a great catch off the post. A poacher's instinct really there on the edge of the square, something similar to Barry Nugent's goal, just a real corner forwards goal on the end of it and 
Now it's really game on. In it goes again to Horgan this time. To Ben O'Connor, who can put the minimum between the teams with his fifth point. 2.15 to 2.14. In towards Kieran Murphy. Clever player. Slips. Then realises where Ben O'Connor was. Tried to go by and succeeds in getting away from Pat Vaughan. Having a go and putting it over the bar. From eight points down at half time, which was 24 minutes ago, Cork have gone in front. That's a nine point turnaround and a seventh point for Ben O'Connor. Nocton. Having a go. And he's put it over the bar. It's just his first point. And great work by Timmy McCarthy as well. I mean, that's the centre forward's job is to break the ball through. If he's not allow his men win clean possession there, and Nocton anticipating that running onto it, and it's an easy score because when he gets on the run like that, you won't stop him. Into the inside forwards again towards Gilligan. Gilligan chasing after this time. Gardner in pursuit. It's Gilligan, strong, resolute. Checking onto his left hand side and he puts it over. That's a wonderful point. And they're level for the third time in a wonderful match. Well, Joe, we've been saying it all day. A fantastic work from Gilligan, like holding off John Gardner, using all his strength and then the cuteness to turn back onto the strong side and an easy score. And we wonder who'll have the legs now in the last few minutes. Under pressure, the clear half back line runs on to Ronan and Ronan immediately fires it over the bar. Just like Kieran Murphy after he was introduced and gold after 53. First touch for Ronan and he's put it over to make it 218 to 217. Is it to be heartbreak for Clare once again against Cork? Carmody trying to win it, so too is Tom Kenny of Cork. Colin Lynch now, dashing inside, takes it up, holds it with difficulty. Brian Murphy against him, Nocton's back there as well. Carmody trying to hold on to it, succeeding, fires it back to Jonathan Clancy, looking for a score, and the umpires look at it and say no, just outside. I think Jonathan Clancy's very upset there, and the replay would indicate maybe that ball was very close to being over the bar. Races forward. Great carrying ability. Again, he lobs it in. Kieran Murphy's in there. The goalkeeper securely takes. Great handling by Philly Brennan. Put under pressure by Kieran Murphy. 20 seconds to go. Comes back to Ben O'Connor. Cork leading by a point. Has a man over. Uses him. It's Neil Ronan. And it's over the bar. That is surely that. The referee looks at his watch, blows his whistle. And it is Cork who go through to the semi-finals where they will have a match-up with their old pals from the All-Ireland champions, Kilkenny. Final score here, Cork, two goals and 19 points. Clare, two goals and 17. Still inching their way forward under new manager Davy Fitzgerald, Waterford will be hoping that the sensational scoring form of Owen Kelly is maintained. Outsiders Wexford have been known to bounce back from big defeats by Kilkenny, so this may not be straightforward for the favourites. Stephen Banville battling with Ken McGrath. Big troublesome full forward, posing problems for most teams that he's played against. Here's a chance for Jacob. Captain of Wexford equalises the game for the very first time. Ball straight down the middle. David Redmond. Alret the Bala. Great club in Wexford, producing great stars like Martin Story, Liam Dunn. Jacob's ball is a good one over for Stephen Doyle. Gets inside the cover. He's going for the goal. Here's a good example of confidence. The ball's ending by Jacob. He's switching corners all the time. Here comes Doyle. The little dummy. The strike. The back of the net. Great start by Wexford. That's hurling class, Marty. One wonderful ball across the field. 
easily cut out by David O'Connor. Down the middle, Tony Brown calls for it. About to be hooked by Stephen Doyle. Far as Seamus Prendergast. Lobbing it in, very high. White flag raised, good score. Seamus Prendergast. Scoring his third point in the championship campaign. Knocked down by Cullum Farrell into the path of Owen Quigley. Taking the game to Waterford and leaving them for dead. Onto the 45 meter line. He hits. Great point. He's a good hurler. It's a great score. And watch the man behind him. He left Dan Shannon in his way, certainly, and uh, showed a great level of fitness. David O'Connor goes up for this, and it's the hurler of the year, 0-7. Dan Shanahan, slither, clue to the hurley. He's getting inside Colin Farrell, gives it outside for his own McGrath. There's a goal opportunity here, and he takes his point. Best bit of action we've seen from a Waterford attack, and it's created by a man who's been out of form so far this summer. Picked up by Declan Prendergast. Brother Shimps getting away this time from David Redmond. Redmond tries to get the hook in. Good ball. Tries on McGrath. Turns. Usually after from here, his body reaction would suggest that that is over the bar. It's his third point. As much as the Wexford full forward line are causing problems, when the ball is left into the Waterford full forward line in an intelligent way, well then they too can cause problems. Seamus Prendergast drops this in. Dan Shannon is underneath it. So too is Paul Roach. Referee again blows his whistle. And he's giving a free in this time to the Deshiks. <laughs> Owen Kelly is going for his round half a dozen points. Will really he go for more than that? Goes for the goal! psychological boost on the stroke of half time and changes the complexion of the scoreline completely Wexford should have anticipated this they had four men on the line he went to blast it and a whiz past him in Fitzendry and his colleagues from the full back line Brendan O'Leary sending it into the corner. It's a good ball for a corner forward, despite the fact that Owen Murphy is right beside Rory Jacob. Battles hard to win possession. Drops it in. Is there a connection here? A slightest touch! Clinton Hennessy is disgusted. But Wexford get the second goal of the game. The ball dropped in from Rory Jacob. Willie Doran looks to be the man at the edge of the small rectangle, but was he in the square before yeah. the ball arrived? When Jacob did get possession, he was aiming for a point, and the ball fell short, and I, I thought he was at, inside the square, and here we see it again, I think he's in the square before the ball comes in. Willie Doran has a great family pedigree, you might remember his dad, Cullum Doran, and of course his uncle, Tony Doran, was a great full forward in the late 60s and 70s for Wexford. Linesman indicates a Wexford ball, yes. Darren Stapp. Knocked away by Declan Prendergast, who's been rock solid at left corner back. Dermot Ling gives it inside for Stephen Doyle. Pinky about a second goal, third goal, he's got it! Third goal, Wexford! Second goal, Doyle! And the Wexford fans rejoice on the terraces of Semple Stadium. Just watch where he changed his mind here. He thought about blasting, got inside the cover. Hennessy was cruelly exposed. On John Milan is underneath it, still unable to gather cleanly. On McGrath chases after this, scatters. Dan Shanahan waiting around the edge of the square, lays it back. It's not a good pass. Still, Waterford retained possession. Wexford now seem to be inspired. They're all over the place, not challenging uh, unfairly or illegally. Rick Walsh gets it first Milan, the one man who can score from any angle, drops this in, first Dan Shannon, up goes the hand, here comes the shot, oh brilliant! He's back! And when Dan plays, Waterford usually perform. Cracky 
amazing second half. Did I say it was quite a while ago, Tomas? I was saying we had no goals, Matthew. We have five now. Lays it in for his Rory Jacob. Tries to get away from Owen Murphy, succeeds. Flicks it in. Good play. Good hand pass. David Redmond. This will be a quality score. It's his second point. But Wexford are not panicking. In comes the long ball. Here comes the hand pass. Then have a shot. And the dishes. And fighting back. Michael Jacob over here. Well got it. Owen McGrath. Flicking this forward. And just sneaking it over the bar. That's his fourth point. All, every single one of them from play. Up first, John Millar. Hops all the way first, Dan Shanahan onto his left hand side. Dan Shanahan has rediscovered the form of 0 7. It's taken until the end of July, 0 8. But he has now scored a goal and a point in this second half. Here is Stephen Doyle again. Floating this one in, it's a good ball, could well work out, it's David Redmond bearing down on goal, here comes the cross, here comes the chance, and it's into the hands of Ken McGrath, but the referee has blown his whistle, the Wexford attacker was fouled, and it is going to be a penalty. Now who's going to take it, it's Damien Fitzhenry is coming all the way down to the far end of Central Stadium. Davy Fitzgerald is down there at the goal line, advising Clinton Hennessy. Damien Fitzhenry is facing Clinton Hennessy. Keeper against keeper. He blasts it over the bar. Long puck out again. Added to by Owen McGrath. Challenge. An illegal one. Sideline ball to Waterford. This was David O'Connor coming across. Oh, it was good defensive play, Marty. He got the flick to the ball, touched the ball first and put it out over the sideline ball. Correct decision. Sideline ball quickly taken. John Milan is beginning to pose problems. They know it is that left-hand side that is the most dangerous. Three points in a fine second-half performance. Fine catch by Jack Kennett. Michael Brick Watch in again towards Owen Kelly. This time he got us cleanly. Makes an angle. Turns a different direction and that is over the bar. He did this last week against Offaly, only it was at this side of the field. Just a few meters in from the sideline. And I, eight days later, this is his position. Turns yeah. onto his right hand side. That's a beautiful strike. Fantastic score, Marty. by Stephen Malumphy, free in. Take the point or we'll just drop it in around the square. Extra 13 metres for descent. They really, players should really learn not to argue with the referee. They give the advantage immediately to their opponents. Well, uh, if, if, with one minute left, I mean, he's got, I, I think he's got to make up his mind at this stage where he's going to go for. I think he's going to go for a point and hope that there's enough time after this to get an equaliser. Dermot Lang, score of four points. Goes for the point and gets it. Is there time left for Wexford to get an equaliser? Davy Fitzgerald looking at the referee. Is he about to blow the full-time whistle? The whistle is blown and Waterford are in the All-Ireland hurling semi-final. They may have conceded three goals this afternoon, but it won't matter now because this is the full-time score. It's Waterford, 219, Wexford, 315. It's Waterford in the All-Ireland semi-final. In the first semi-final, Kilkenny faced their biggest rivals this decade. Cork have been reborn in the qualifiers and hope to exploit Kilkenny's long break since winning Leinster. If the champions only look unbeatable because of the lack of serious opposition in Leinster, then Cork are poised to take advantage. But what if Kilkenny are actually that good? Well, after an 
month absence from the senior game. Noel Hickey returns to the Kilkenny full back line for the first time since last year's All-Ireland Final. His return allows JJ Delaney to revert to wing back with Jackie Tyrrell now back in the corner. At the other end of the field, there's a start for corner forward Aidan Fogarty. His selection up front means that Derek Ling is able to move back into his favourite midfield berth. Cork's main selection poser was whether or not to start Dermot O'Sullivan on the edge of the square. In the event, the management team have given the man they call the Rock a renewed vote of confidence. It means that team captain John Gardner can play in his accustomed wing back spot, and the midfield of Tom Kenny and Jerry O'Connor can remain unaltered. Niall McCarthy, who plays before half time against Clare, once again starts on the 40. Michael Wadding is in charge, the man from Waterford. He's got James Owen and he's got Brian Gavin with him on the sidelines. And uh, straight away switches and changes. Henry Shefflin going onto the 40, Martin Comerford going into full forward. And that was anticipated. Straight away, Niall McCarthy for Cork, trying to set them into the first attack of the match. And back there to defend Noel Hickey. Good to see him back. Into the centre of the park where it's taken well by Owen Larkin. Down into the inside forward line. Opportunity immediately here for Kilkenny to launch a decent attack there with Martin Comerford trying to set it up there for Aidan Forward. He ran away from him, however. Back there as far as Roland Curran at the centre half back for Cork drives it away down the field towards Niall McCarthy. Picked up here by Ben O'Connor trying to free it outside there to Cottle Nocton. We'll expect Nocton to do a little bit of roaming. Great sense of anticipation. The match everybody has wanted to see for weeks now in hurling. And that little pile up will be. Finished, I imagine. Oh, the linesman, Brian Gavin's got over there. Well, it really is hot and heavy. Should we start with a throw ball? But you never know, the fighting and the rowing just continuing and spilling over a little bit. Definitely, Tommy lost his holy and didn't want to let the ball up, and uh, McCarthy was trying to shift him off it, and I suppose that's when they got entangled with each other. It doesn't mean there's any real belts thrown, it's more of just a... Uh, pulling and dragging match really. Tom Fitzpatrick for Kilkenny. A couple of players on the ground. Runs in there towards Aidan Fogarty. Looking to try and hit this angle shot over the bar. And he succeeds. It's the opening score of the match. Coming in the fifth minute. Aidan Fogarty, the man who won man of the match here in the All-Ireland final a couple of seasons ago. And that was an absolutely brilliant point there. Donalo Cusack taking the puck out. Inside towards Niall McCarthy, stopped in there. Brian Hogan's trying to get the ball away. Ben O'Connor trying to drag it out to himself. Jackie Turrell steps in, back towards John Gardner, the wing back, trying to put the team's level, and he succeeds. Great score. John Gardner making it a point to piece. Again, it's Owen Larkin. Just taking a tumble, the referee says play on. Richie Parr does. Well, expansively across here and held somehow. Nice strike, and that's over the bar. Good play there by Henry Shefflin. And the former team captain puts it over for his first point of the match. Only his second point to come from play, by the way, since he's come back from that very nasty injury. But he's made it two points apiece. Beautifully balanced match. Great score by Henry Shefflin. That's dropped there. And it's Richie Parr who tries to advance, failing to do so. John Gardner here to help out Ronan Curran, who had dropped that ball initially. Comes back to Derek Ling now. Little hand pass outside here. Henry Shefflin having a go from some distance. And Henry Shefflin has put it over the bar. What a point. A second for Henry Shefflin. And every indication that he is back to his very best. Comes out here towards Ben O'Connor again, and Ben O'Connor is getting on the ball time and again. And JJ Delaney will have to stick a little bit tighter to him. This time it's Noel Hickey showing the sharpness, even though he's been out for 11 months. Succession of injuries. Here's Shalago Halpin. That was beautifully taken, delivered beautifully into the corner there towards Joe Dean. Over there is Michael Kavanagh. Joe Dean has possession. Charles Patrick after him. Number of other people as well. Jerry O'Connor now, hand passing into the centre here, and that shot hit and hit brilliantly by Patrick Horgan. The Glen man puts it over the bar, and Cork lead by four points to three. Yeah, they're a fantastic score, initially made by a fantastic interception and catch by Sean Oak. Launched it up to Joe Dean, who didn't panic even though he was surrounded, worked it to Jerry O'Connor, to Patrick Horgan, and he rifled it over, and it's really boiling up here now. It's, it's, 
It's really taken off as a game. Big one down towards Martin Comerford against David O'Sullivan. That's a good catch by David O'Sullivan. That will build up his confidence again. Oh, how be now trying to get away from Henry Shefflin. Much better into the centre here to Jerry O'Connor from a huge distance out. Having a go, and that is an inspiring score. Jerry O'Connor. That's magical. And that all came about as a result of the catch by Diarmuid O'Sullivan laying it off to O'Halpine into the midfielder. Three players involved, and it's five points to four. Huge one back down towards Richie Parr. Reaches Aidan Fogarty instead, and he's hooked and blocked, and it's come out to Shane O'Neill. In trouble there, however. Falls back once again here towards Henry Shefflin, and Shefflin setting up Owen Larkin for a shot here for Kilkenny, and he has fired it over the bar, his first of the day. Great work by the James Stevens player, who's made it six points apiece, and it's a thrilling opening 21 minutes. Fitzpatrick setting it up here for Henry Shefflin, skillfully forward there, beautifully done. As far as Owen Larkin, and Larkin with his customary accuracy straight over his second point, and it's eight points to six. Prodded forward here, but only as far as Tommy Welch, the wing back, right half for Kilkenny. Beautifully on for Fogarty. Again, he makes a darting run from the corner. Explosive power as far as Eddie Brennan. Haven't seen a great deal of him so far. We have now. First point, 9-6. That time it was beautifully taken down by Derek Ling. After him is Tom Kenny, but Kenny was a fast man, can't catch up with him yet, but he has now. Look at the number of players in there in the centre, and it's Owen Larkin emerging from that group. It's a dangerous moment, there's a goal chance, and it's buried! And it's Owen Larkin who gets the game's first goal after 29 minutes, only his second time ever to crash a ball into the back of the net. Did it against Offaly last year in the Leinster Championship. He's done it in the semi-final of the All-Ireland here. Lovely little draw to take it around Shane O'Neill, and there was nothing Donald O'Cusack could do. 1-9 to six points. It's the biggest break in the match so far. Now is there a cork response? Niall McCarthy chasing after it. Noel Hickey is there as well to guard it. He gets it in, however, as far as Jerry O'Connor has moved into the inside forward line. Puts his twin brother Ben. Cork need a score. And Ben O'Connor puts it wide. Could have been the moment. Unbelievable stuff, Turin. I don't know how far outside the post it was, but great, great link up play between the two twins. Fantastic goal at the other end for Kilkenny and great work from their defence to set it up and also Derek Ling, but on Larkin having a tremendous game at left half forward and just rewards for how well he's playing to get that goal. Well, Kilkenny came into the match as favourites. Comerford here, looking to try and release it to a colleague here. And again, there is danger because Eddie Brennan's about and Eddie Brennan has put it over the bar. Two in a row now for Eddie Brennan. He's found his confidence, he's found his touch, they found their feet and their voices again. And Kilkenny are stealing away from Cork, even in this first half. And they are the All-Ireland champions, and they are looking for three in a row this year. Eddie Brennan. And Eddie Brennan pushes that advantage forward to nine points with his third point of the first half. This is some performance. The Cats are certainly purring. Missed and fumbled there by Cahill Nocton, not quite in the best of form so far, long way to go. Henry Shefflin, well, he looks fresh. He looks absolutely determined, and he's got a sixth point. He's flying. Inside towards Niall McCarthy, but again it comes back out there. JJ Delaney trying to get the ball away, comes out as far as Park Cronin, who's discarded the white helmet, and puts it over the bar, his first point of the match. Here's Tommy Welch, out into the middle of the park. There are Cork players there waiting for it, but they get in a muddle initially, and it breaks then for Cahill Nocton. Good support play by the Newton Chandran player. Going for it himself, an explosive shot from 45 metres out, draws a wide flag, his first point of the day, and it is 114 to 10 points. It's down to a seven-point advantage. 
Cholugo Halpine rises up but bats it down only to Charles Patrick. The Kilkenny skipper getting it forward there as far as Martin Cover for the well blocked down by Dermot O'Sullivan. He's playing well this afternoon, deserves full credit for that. Ben O'Connor getting the ball out. Gardner's to his right, doesn't need him. A little solo run here by Ben O'Connor towards his brother Jerry once again. Darting inside Jackie Terrell. Jackie's trying to get back. Still Jerry O'Connor inside there again. Timmy McCarthy. And that ball has gone over the bar. Good response for the Cork substitute and Timmy McCarthy, who got a goal, of course, in the early stages of the second half when he came on a sub in the game against Clare. This time getting him with a point as Jerry McCarthy fed it up for him there. He was probably going for a goal, but it went up and over. 114 to 11. Six points the difference. Kilkenny continuing to lead. A blind ball to Cork who trailed at half-time by eight points. They're down by six at this stage against the All-Ireland champions of the last two years. O'Connor whipping it in off the stick of Fraggy Murphy to Cronin. Stopped brilliantly. JJ Delaney got in the way. Goalkeeper was diving one way. Balls back out. Out as far as Derek Ling, the midfielder, left it behind when he was tackled there by Tom Kenny. Kenny loses the blue helmet and darts away in tenacious fashion from some 50 metres out. Having a go and putting it over the bar is second of the game. Now the fans are a great deal more encouraged. It's a five point lead now. Martin Comerford touching it on as far as Richie Parr and Richie Parr stumbling 13 metres out or thereabouts trying to go forward inside here Eddie Brennan surrounded by Cork players just outside the line and the referee has signalled a penalty and they are absolutely incensed about that because it looked outside this is where it was happening there's the 20 metre line and there's the square to your right now there's where he's three yards he held. He's That's three, not a penalty. He's not, he's not given a penalty. No, he's not given a penalty. It's going to be a left. 20 meter line. Just got to be a free in. And I'd say Henry tap this over and I'll be happy with the point and just keep you know get the scoreboard working again from a Kilkenny point of view. Yeah, he'll be very very pleased just to put this over and steady a few Kilkenny nerves. Seven points for Henry Shefflin, just in case there was any doubt whatsoever about. Kilkenny's resolution and determined termination to see off the Cork challenge. Brian Hogan again settling things down at centre half back for Kilkenny, getting it forward there. Again, it's Henry Shefflin driving it in inside towards Eddie Brennan, trying to balance it on his stick, succeeding there. Again, trying to make an angle, getting away from Brian Murphy and putting it beautifully over the bar. Wonderful point by Eddie Brennan. Good low ball inside here, intended for Eddie Brennan. Brennan couldn't get there first. It's Shane O'Neill instead, holding off all the would-be approaches by Kilkenny. But then Larkin gets a favourable bounce back again, runs into John Gardner. There too is O'Neill, Gardner on his hands and knees. And then coming into lens support was Aidan Fogarty. Referee again is going to throw the ball in. Eight minutes to go in this All-Ireland hurling semi-final. That's another factor, Ger, is it with the kick any forwards? They won't allow soft clearances, which some other teams may. And as a result of all of that, it's Derek Ling who nips in to put it over the bar. Well, he'll be absolutely delighted with that. And 119 now to 14 points. It's uh, Cahill Nocton, by the way, who's been replaced by Pawdy O'Sullivan. So the two O'Sullivans, Dermot and Pawdy, brothers now once again in the Cork Championship team, just as they were at the outside of the Championship against Tipperary, as we watch Willie O'Dwyer fire it in and put it over the bar. Willie is still around, still a wonderful operator, and the scores mount up impressively, and it's 121 now to Cork's 15 points. That is a nine-point difference. Well, Kilkenny led by eight at half-time. You'd have been expecting a big recovery by Cork, but at this stage in the match, in the 67th minute, Kilkenny have even improved their half-time tally. Nine points in front as Kieran Fraggy Murphy gets involved there with one of the Kilkenny players, and it hots up. Oh, now that was a blow there, which the referee will have seen. Has to have seen it because he was right next to it. Let's have a look at this again, Anthony. It may have been Tom Kenny who actually made contact. 
let's just have a look at this again. Watch for Tom Kenny. Watch the hurley. There. Yeah, maybe a little flick by Tom Kenny. And yep. Maybe he just caught, flick. Maybe yep. he caught just him somewhere him. To, on, on the sore side. Let's hope Tom Fitzpatrick's OK. I'm sure he will make a very quick recovery. Painful, and he felt it, and the fans appreciate what a wonderful young captain he is. One more attack, maybe, by Cork. Not if Kilkenny have their way, not if TJ Reid has his. And TJ Reid also wants to share in the scoring off the post and over the bar. So two of the substitutes have come in for points in the second half. First, Willie O'Dwyer, now TJ Reid. Great colleges player as well, TJ Reid. And over the post. Fantastic underage talent, Aaron. He'd be saying he'd be looking for game time in the final at this stage now. That's away there by Derek Ling. Into the corner towards Aidan Fogarty. It's such a good first half. Three points in that first half. Looking for a fourth point. That'll do very, very nicely indeed. What a finish. What an absolutely brilliant finish this is. As the final whistle goes, it's Kilkenny who are en route to the All-Ireland final. Yet again, the dream of winning three in a row for this marvellous team is well and truly still in place. Today was Kilkenny's day. They won by nine points. Kilkenny won 23. Cork, 17 points. Like Kilkenny, Tipperary have had a long break since winning the provincial title. Waterford's recovery from early season turmoil has continued and they've had plenty of match practice as they embark on a sixth semi-final in 11 years, hoping at last to reach the final. Unbeaten tip are favourites, but out of the last four championship encounters between these teams, Waterford have the superior record, winning three. Well, Tipperary make one change for this semi-final, and it's in the forwards where Hugh Maloney, who's played many times as a wing-back, is given the crucial centre-forwards role. The Nina-era Oak player edges out Pat Kerwick from the side that won the Munster final five weeks ago. Seamus Butler is moved to full forward, with one of Tip's stars in Limerick, Seamus Callanan, chosen out of the wing. Davy Fitzgerald's Waterford reconfigure their back line to confront the expected challenge from Tipperary. Two new faces here from the team that beat Wexford in the quarterfinal. Aidan Carney and Kevin Moran replace Shane O'Sullivan and Brian Phelan. The main area of speculation centres on where exactly Ken McGrath will play. He's been fullback in recent games, of course, but a move out to number six wouldn't surprise at all. Will it be Liam or Davy's day? Tip or Waterford to face Kilkenny? In September, it's Tipperary who won the toss. The match will be refereed by Dermot Kerwin, who was the All-Ireland final referee in 2007. Monster final referee this year down in Limerick with Tipperary. Beat Clare and already tempers raised somewhat. It's time for the action. Second All-Ireland Hurling semi-final about to begin. Everybody anxious for the ball to be thrown in. And away we go. And straight away it's Shane McGrath from Ballina Hinch. Not making much headway there. Tony Brown trying to get the ball away. Stephen Malumphy in there as well in the thick of all of that. They try to get it out. Shane McGrath still on his hands and knees. Malumphy scooping it out. Only as far as James Woodlock. Trying to make some headway with Hugh Maloney there as well. Stymied. Aidan Carney trying to get the ball away, and so too is Tony Brown. And eventually whipped out of danger there by Owen Murphy of Waterford. Little or no breeze around. Evan Corcoran going back, the right half. Little push, it seemed, there from Kevin Moore and got away with it. Michael Brick Walsh, the Waterford captain, outside here as far as Malumphy once again. He's been busy so far in as far as Owen McGrath. McGrath, it'll be interesting to see exactly where he plays this afternoon played as a third midfielder, also a very, very astute corner forward being marked by Conor O'Brien. Well, Jared, the interesting thing straight away is that Ken McGrath has come out to play centre-back and uh, Declan Prendergast has come back full. And uh, I've also noticed that Steve Manumphy is playing very, very deep, so possibly the tactic is to draw the Waterford players to draw them out the field and leave maybe Owen Kelly inside on, on Paul Curtin by himself. And uh, it's almost certain that uh, Owen McGrath will play deep and pull Conor O'Brien around the place. That's interesting. Well, Owen Kelly, you mentioned him, he's the free taker as well. And he's put this one over the bar for the perfect start for Waterford. Off to a flyer. 
Well, that'll do the confidence an awful lot of good to Owen Kelly's, of course, playing in the match. This is the Waterford version. Huge one, way down there. Caught well. And it's Ken McGrath who's got across to take it. Now playing at centre half back towards John Milan. Getting out there first ahead of him, Eamon Buckley. And that one is over the bar. What a good shot. What a good start. Back out here he comes again towards Michael Brick Walsh. Back into Prendergast. Looking for a big performance from him. He's lost the stick. Looking for John Milan. Finding Eamon Corcoran instead. And Milan goes in. Causes problems. Supported here by Malumphy. Coming onto it perfectly and driving it over the bar. What a good start by Waterford. Four points to nil. They are leading the match after five and a half minutes of play. Tip looking for something to settle them down. And Seamus Callanan's first touch wasn't a good one. And they are unnerved by all of this, Tipperary, the monster champions. This will be taken by Owen Murphy, playing today in his 32nd championship match. What a catch that by Milan. He's flying, taking off after him is Eamon Buckley. Can he catch him? No, he can't. Milan striking and Milan scoring off the stick of Brendan Cummins. And Milan has got a second point. Brendan Cummins puck out. Now it's turn of the Tipperary forwards to get going, to put a bit of pressure on the Waterford backs if they can. Tony Brown, way down, and it's Owen McGrath who's after it. In the clear here. Conor O'Brien was uh, left for dead, and it's Owen McGrath who drives this one, and he puts it over the bar. What a score. Here's Shane McGrath. Oh, what a leap in the air. What terrific work. Owen Kelly. Immense. Just watch this again. Big, huge leap in the air and a great take with his left hand. So this to make it 6-3. Owen Kelly with two. Both of his points coming from frees. In fact, all three scores for Tipperary so far have come from placed balls. Oh, spills beyond the hands of Seamus Prendergast that time. Here's Owen McGrath. Trying to steal march once again on the corner back. Angling the shot and putting it beautifully over the bar. That's a second for Owen McGrath. He's playing terrific hurling this year. Really in tip-top form. 7-3. And McGrath beginning to fire on all cylinders and he drives this one over the bar, his first point. He's had a great season. Shane McGrath coming up from midfield, first point of the day, and he's made it seven points to five. Tip have taken a while to find their feet, but they now have certainly found them. Towards Lark Corbett, here's John O'Brien, leaving it behind this time, trying to get by Lark Corbett into the centre towards Jamie Nagel for Waterford back to Tony Brown Brown wearing number 6, playing at right half back all the way back down towards Dan Shanahan Dan Shanahan advancing well I wasn't quite sure whether he was going to try and use the stick or the boot it's Mara who takes it in the end and Dan Shanahan's goal touch just eluding him he appeals by Owen Kelly to the referee's better senses but the referee has decided it's going to be a free out well, difficult ball to take there, but it comes came out very smartly, and the only chance then had to maybe stiff it under his body with his boot, but good defence there by Shane Mann. Owen Murphy coming across here, the man from Shamrocks. Oh! Dear, oh dear. Well worth seeing that again. Well, I think what happened there, Jerry, was that Lark Corbett was anticipating um, in time to hold the ball at the shoulder him, and then he stepped him back very quickly and uh, I don't think there was any great intent of injury or anything. And it's a yellow card for Lark Corbett for that. Owen Murphy still lying on the ground. And they're not happy at all with referee Dermot Kerwin. Well, the referee has taken the name of Lark Corbett, but they are still incensed that their man, Owen Murphy, 
will struggle to continue in the match. Here's McGraw, Shane McGraw. Big huge one in towards our Corbett. Corbett in, trying to score, stop there by Clinton Hennessy. Good stop by the goalkeeper, using his body well, showing courage and commitment. Let off for Waterford. Milan lets it drop this time. Down as far as Paul Curran and Conor O'Mahony. O'Mahony getting the ball away into the middle. Breaks nicely for Seamus Callanan, taking off. Will he go for a score from here himself? He does. Great accuracy. First of the day for Seamus Callanan, the 20-year-old who got 1-3 in the Munster final. Taking away here brilliantly. Playing like a veteran. Nicely taken here. Owen McGrath back down once again towards another row, and Owen Kelly... And this one is inside the right-hand post, and it's over the bar. First point to come from play for Owen Kelly. He's got four so far. Waterford have got nine, and they lead the match by two in the 34th minute. Good combined play here from Owen McGrath to Owen Kelly. Not an easy angle. It comes out again to Seamus Callanan, profiting by the move to centre-forward. A second in a few moments by Seamus Callanan. Now Dan Shanahan playing into the goal at the canal end, way to the right-hand side. Early ball in here to cause a little bit of consternation, a bit of a wild pull there by John Mullan. And you can see Conor O'Brien there wasn't one bit pleased with that. Broken Hurley. Fresh one required. Before all of that, the referee's got to speak to Mullan. And telling him just to calm down a little bit. Yellow card. Three yellow cards now for Waterford players. Yeah, Jerry, he was a bit late there, and uh, you know he, he his hurley came in contact with the handle of the hurley, which you know uh, can be dangerous. But um, I think he was just a bit late. Tipper up for it at the start of the second half. Everybody's up for it. Ken McGrath goes back, takes on the responsibility close to his own end line, fires it forward, skids in the grass here. Shane Mars had a good solid match getting away from Dan Shanahan, inside towards James Woodlock. Strong, very determined, very committed. Back out to Maher again, having a go himself and putting it over the bar. Great point by Shane Maher. McGrath again, but this time Shane McGrath. Racing forward, laying it off here to Hugh Maloney. Maloney with a chance, having a go. And in the end, failing to get in his shot, Clinton Hennessy takes it away. Maloney was closed down, delayed a little bit. Maybe not much he could have done with it because of the closeness of the backs. Back out once again via Conor O'Mahony. Into McGrath, having another go. And that's put over the bar. And Shane McGrath with a second. Cheers all around from the Tipperary fans. Tipperary lead by 12 points to 11. Brick Walsh here, the captain, inside towards Stephen Malamfi. Can't allow a gap to develop. That's cleverly in as far as John Milan, giving him a chance. Milan with the shot, and Milan has put this one over the bar. Great response by Waterford, and a third point of the match for John Milan. Here's Ken McGrath. Match there to be won and lost. Beautifully balanced tie. All-Ireland semi-final, back out into the centre of the park, and that is over the bar, and Michael Brick Walsh puts his first point over the bar, and the teams are level for the fourth time. Declan Prendergast in there, needing help, Owen Murphy with a yellow helmet, surrounded by Tipperary players, gets it out, shoulders coming in strongly there, back towards Tony Brown it comes, and Brown knocked out over the end line, or so it appeared from here, but the referee says, play on, the umpire had a look at it, didn't say he carried the ball out, that's Jamie Nagel, into the centre of the park, comes to Shane McGrath, and the Tipperary man punches the air with delight, he's put another one over, a third point for Shane McGrath.
They carry it forward again with some determination here by Jack Kennedy. One-handed forward by Dan Shannon. Oh, it's on the goal line! And it's in the back of the net! There is a goal! And inevitably it's Owen Kelly! But the Waterford version of that! 56 minutes are gone in the game! And Owen Kelly of Waterford gets in for another championship goal this season. Sixth of the year! Ninth in his career, goalkeeper made a great stop, but it was prodded home by Owen Kelly, and it's now 115 to Waterford, 16 points for Tipperelli. Now what's the response? Well, Tip have come back already from being six behind, and they've got a goal at the other end! What a goal by Seamus Callanan! Only a matter of 60 seconds after the Waterford goal, Seamus Callanan, who scored from Callanan, who found the back of the net. Jack Kennedy was going for it, so too. And taken forward here with a little bit of difficulty. And that has been put over the bar. Michael Brick Walsh, the scorer this time. Good work by the man from Strad Valley, and it's 117 to 116. Quite a game. Really compelling action. Lock Orbit, he's got a point already. The defence seemed to freeze for a moment, and he's put the ball wide. Wasted opportunity. Waterford still leading, 118 to 117. Within the 65th minute, five to go. Coming out of defence with it here is Conor O'Mahony. He's made a lot of ground. Players calling for it in space. This time it's Seamus Callanan. He's got a goal chance. It's a great stop. Comes out to Webster. Oh, he's missed the opportunity. Second time of asking. Deflected away by Declan Prendergast for a 65. That should have been a temporary goal. It was an absolutely fantastic ta tackle by Declan Prendergast when Webster was going to shoot and uh, the chance was lost. Owen Kelly's ready to take the result in 65. His team a point behind. They're in a hurry. They want to get to the final. They want a date with Kilkenny in September. It's on the way, and it is put wide. He's missed. Still Waterford lead. I'm just reflecting on the last 10 minutes. We had that goal by Owen Kelly after 56 minutes, and within a minute, Seamus Callanan's goal. You felt that was going to be the boost for Tipperary to go on and win the match. And they haven't done that. Here's Eamon Corcoran dropping it in. There's plenty of players in the square. It's not going to count, not going to count. Webster is absolutely furious. Eamon Corcoran dropped it in. They were ready to celebrate. That's the uh, Tipperary fans, but it's the Waterford fans who've got bigger, broader smiles. Here's Kerwick for Tipperary. Denied. Take it away from him. Tony Brown trying to take it up. Tony Brown holding on to it with Ken McGrath, getting it away from Waterford. They've been out of the glory scene, the All Ireland final day, for so long. Will they be denied again? That's Benny Dunn, and Benny Dunn has put it over the bar. It's only a one point game. Absolutely magnificent. Well, we may have Olympic heroes in Beijing, but there are heroes down there right now. Eamon Corcoran back down, comes here once again towards Owen McGrath, across towards Stephen Malumphy, he's got two points of the match so far. Trying to nurse it forward to a colleague, Herney was there, Herney's after it, he's got it. Linking up here with Jack Kennedy, they've got a player over, Kelly, and it's off the stick and it's over the bar. He was going for a goal, but he content himself with a point. Kelly of Waterford has scored a goal and 10 points out of Waterford's one goal and 20. More substitutions, but we have two minutes of injury time gone. The referee is calling back the ball. Back you come, lads, back you come. Well, Joe, you see that tactic when it comes into extra time. Uh, you know, put on a few substitutes, it takes 30 seconds, maybe 40 seconds out of the game, and uh, you don't get that back. Tipperary are unbeaten from January all the way through to this day, the 17th of August. Will their unbeaten...
unbeaten record continue. They're in grave danger. Two points adrift, and Waterford have one foot in the All-Ireland hurling final. It would be another Kilkenny Waterford final, but there hasn't been one for over 40 years. Well, a goal is needed here, but I think Brendan Cummins will ask you, Puck out, puck them very long, and that was right into Waterford's uh, free bar, so to speak, but they need to get a goal here. Somewhere, somehow, they need to find the space, and they need to be denied by Waterford, and Aidan Carney is going to deny them, and the whistle has gone, and Waterford have qualified for the All-Ireland Hurling Final under the management of Davy Fitzgerald, with so many stars everywhere and anywhere. They have beaten Tipperary, the monster champions, by two points. They've bridged the gap of 45 years. The full-time score, Waterford, one goal and 20 points. Tipperary, one goal and 18. The final everyone expected 12 months ago will decide the destination of this year's All-Ireland. Kilkenny's hurling against Cork looked at times untouchable and their hot favourites to take a third successive title. Under Davy Fitzgerald and amidst a blaze of blue and white fervour, Waterford have bounced back into a first All-Ireland final in 45 years. They also beat their opponents in the 2007 league final and have the physique to compete with the champions. It would be a major surprise, but Waterford are one of the few teams who might actually be able to spring it. Well, Kilkenny's management group are seemingly happy with the 15 that started the All-Ireland semi-final last month against Cork. Indeed, just one change from the team that started the 2007 final with Willie O'Dwyer replaced this time by Richie Parr. And while neither Parr nor Martin Comerford raised a flag here four weeks ago, they will both relish the big occasion and they are due to start today in the half-forward line alongside the inform Owen Larkin. As with Kilkenny, Waterford are also satisfied with the form their team showed here against Tipperary last month. Ken McGrath is back in the number six shirt alongside the senior man on the team, Tony Brown, at right half. Between them, they have over 50 championship appearances. Leading scorer Owen Kelly, with six goals and 34 points, is selected on the edge of the square, with all Dacia fans hoping for a big return to form today for Dan Shanahan, last year's Hurler of the Year. Just look at the setting. The waiting is over. Waterford fans have waited 45 years. They waited 49 years to get their hands on the McCarthy Cup. Will today be their day? They are rank outsiders. The hottest of favourites. Kilkenny bidding for three in a row. Barry Kelly about to get the match underway and the 120th All-Ireland hurling final gets going. And straight away there is a Kilkenny free for a foul there. Chop it's Patrick. We're watching some switches and some changes and a little bit of aggro breaking out here between Seamus Prendergast and Tommy Welch. Prendergast having a, gone across straight away to play it left half forward on Welch. And Kilkenny are masters at this, Jerry. You know, they've done this so many times. Kevin Moore is the most inexperienced of the water defenders. What will they do? They put Henry Shefflin straight out and to test him straight away. And this is what they did in the Ireland final last year as well. The target for young Seamus Hickey. So we'll wait and see how that one goes. Well, they may be just starting positions for them as Henry stands over this first three and bids to give Kilkenny an immediate lead and succeeds. First point of the day from a free for Henry Shefflin. The man who came back from very, very serious injury after last year's All-Ireland final. Waterford trying to get their attack underway with Jamie Nagel. And there you see Stephen Malumphy going down under the challenge. Free award it and a chance for Waterford to draw level immediately. It's going to be Owen Kelly just inside the 45 metre line. On a very, very good day for Hurling, he puts it nonchalantly over the bar, and the teams are level. Good start by the two free takers, the two number 14s. Moran's back in position. Straight away pressurised, good pressure play there. Martin Comerford, shoulder coming in as well there. Came in from Henry Shefflin. Back to Ken McGrath. McGrath letting fly down towards John Milan. In as you heard, a full forward chance just to try and swing the stick he has possession on McGrath calling for it getting free making an angle again good looking shot in over the bar good start by Owen McGrath oh no it's gone white thought he was going to reach for the white flag that time the loose ball picked up by JJ Delaney 
back once again, right into the goal area. Dangerous one for the backs to contend with. Owen oh, Murphy trying to get the ball away for Waterford. Ken McGrath trying to help him. Little pick up here by Martin Coverford. Trying to go this way and that. Back into the centre, Charles Fatter, the captain, staying back, taking the opportunity and swinging it beautifully high and over. Great point by James Charles Fatter, where Waterford might have scored at one end. Down come Kilkenny and make the most of their opportunity. Well, that's the first point to come from play, as Brian Hogan from Auckland Gales has a loose man ahead of him. It's Henry Shefflin. And he's getting some mileage there against Kevin Moran, and Moran will really have to tie him up big time. That's another point for Henry Shefflin. And Kilkenny go into a two-point lead by three points to one, trying to make the start that they made against Limerick last year. JJ Delaney once again, fearless at left half back, all the way in. Runs on here, Aidan Fogarty running into a challenge, gets it second time of asking, onto his left-hand side. The man who was man of the match in 2006 with his first point of the 2008 final. Sure, I think we've seen in that passage of play what makes this great Kilkenny. What a catch by JJ Delaney, left half back, and then a big high ball in, and that's what Kilkenny forwards will do. Then here's JJ now under this ball, and he's done this so many times in the past. Unbelievable catch there, and a high ball in, and Martin, or the full forward had to fight for it, and Aidan Fogarty over the bar. There's Martin Comerford, into space this time, one for the cornerbacks to run after. Eddie Brennan obliges, making a better angle. Oh, he's so fast, so dynamic. Great score by Eddie Brennan. Eight points to three. Huge one down. Not collected that time, however, but it is with Larkin coming through. This is dangerous. He's Eddie Brennan inside. Goal! The man with the goal touch does it again. There's no stopping him. Look how open Waterford were. All going towards Larkin. Nobody to Brennan into the back of the net. Simple, effective. Back to Ken McGrath. Waterford have plenty of time. If they're able, coming out to take this one, Noel Hickey getting it away out as far as Brian Hogan, centre half back, getting it forward here. Again, there's an opportunity. Richie Parr trying to prod it forward there, and look how open they are again. There's another opportunity for Fogarty this time. First time stop, second time buried. Two in a row for Eddie Brennan. Two goals in the space of a minute, and this final looks to be consigned to the ashes. Two ten to four points. What a beginning! And Eddie Brennan just adds to the number of impressive goals he has scored so far. Fogarty with the first attempt, great save by Clinton Hemmesy, but the poor goalkeeper had a chance, not a prayer this time, and the Kilkenny Cats look to be on for their three in a row. Tony Brown after this one, 35 years of age now, from 65 metres out. This has to be very frustrating so far for him, but they need a goal chance, and Dan Shanahan might be the man. Dan going in, holding on a long time, and the referee says, you held on far too long, and it's play retention for Kilkenny, and play out, and so they did. Prendergast trying to make something of it. Tommy Wells getting back, using the stick, getting support. The reinforcements arrive, still under pressure, and the referee's whistle sounds. And uh, it's going to be uh, a throw ball, I think. Not too many signals from the referee to indicate what he's planning to do, but there you go. We know what Malumph is planning to do to try and advance at every opportunity. And uh, the referee calls back the play, and it's going to be a free in to Waterford for a foul on Stephen Malumphy, the player from Bally Duff Upper. Well, Dan is very, very angry. He felt he was fouled a few moments earlier. Well, P.J. Ryan is poised because he fancies Owen Kelly might have a go for a goal here. I'm sure it's going through his head. Waterford need a lift. He's having a go. It's stopped by the goalkeeper. And Owen McGrath in the follow-up has put the ball wide. It was a chance. He went for it. You knew what he was thinking. You knew he had to do it. Here he went again, and out came P.J. Ryan in front of the other backs, got the stick to it, then it was McGrath immediately in after, and he couldn't steer it in on target. Tommy Welch, huge one in towards Richie Parr, playing full forward this afternoon, breaking it down towards the danger man, Eddie Brennan again, shortens the grip on the stick and puts it beautifully over. 
a goal and two goals and two points for Eddie Brennan. He's having a field day. He's had four shots at the target. Credit Richie Parr for setting it up for him here. Lovely little shot over. He makes it look effortless. For the last four or five years, on the big days, he's just produced a good year after year. Owen Larkin holding off Kevin Moran's half-hearted attempt to challenge, and it's straight over the bar. And Owen Larkin, three points from three shots. A real tour de force. Larkin rising for this one. Little tap down as far as Derek Ling. Such understanding. What about the pace of Ling? And the decisive finish over the bar, his second point. Kilkenny's two midfielders have shared four points equally from play. Waterford at this stage in the game, after 45 minutes, still to get a point from play. John Milan. Well, he's put that right. First point of the game from play, 45, nearly 46 minutes in, John Milan is the scorer. Four scores for the Cats so far in the second half. Four shots, there's another one coming, it's on Larkin. No mistake. 47 minutes of the game gone and Larkin gets his goal. Got one in the semi-final against Cork, he's got another here. Complete opening in the water for defence. They were throwing hurlies at him, but there was nothing to deny Owen Larkin this time. And it's 3.20 to seven points. That's lobbed right in there dangerously. JJ Delaney getting there first. Second time of asking. Still floating around the place there. Goalkeeper in trouble. Here's an opportunity still. Milan cracking it over the bar. He was looking for a goal. He has to be content with the second point of the second half. Dan Shanahan twice miss hit the second time. Owen McGraw also trying to steer it on target. There was Michael Brick Walsh helping it back there as far as Milan, and it elevated far too much up and over. Once again, it is Owen McGraw here. Back towards Shane O'Sullivan, running into all kinds of pressure from Kilkenny's half forwards. Henry Shefflin leading the charge. There too is Derek Ling. They are absolutely smothering Waterford for any kind of poss possible possession. Out to TJ Reid again, and he's having a field day over the bar. Two shots, two points for the number 28. Really enjoying his afternoon now. Another from Ballyhale Shamrocks, TJ Reid. Cat still to strike a wide during the second half as JJ Delaney gets onto it. This time, total mismatch. Eddie Brennan. Stealing a march on Owen Murphy. Reinforcements arriving there as Kevin Moore was trying to come in and help. But Waterford are all over the place. That's Aidan Fogarty. He's only got one point so far. He's now got a second. Beautifully decorated move once more. And they're really relishing watching one of the best teams ever to play in the championship. Going for their three in a row. And that was a great score. Richie Parr, the young teacher, taking it on here. Little hand pass across here to Henry Shefflin. And Henry Shefflin fires it over the bar. He's now got seven points in this final. Man has made a great recovery from a cruciate knee ligament injury that kept him out for the best part of eight months. 324 to nine points. Owen Kelly going backwards. JJ Delaney helping the ball forward as far as TJ Reid. It's just shooting practice. Never quite seen anything like this. Last year's final, Kilkenny versus Limerick, was a good deal more competitive, and that game was deemed to be over after 10 minutes when uh, Kilkenny were 2 3 to no score up. PJ Ryan, who's been a sub himself in goal for so many years, off he comes, and on comes James McGarry, who had tragedy in his life last year and his young son Dara, and they'll be so happy, and so will the fans. That's a lovely moment. One here well by Stephen Malumphy. Trying to gather pace, trying to go forward, and Derek Ling comes in, taps it away from him. Only as far as John Milan, who is, ever is anticipating an almost impossible angle, but a great point by John Milan. Waterford's top player. No question about that. Here's Michael Brick Welch 
on as far as Milan. Will he get another one? Look at the number of backs to close him down. Back out it comes to Kelly. Stopped! And it's in! Owen Kelly! A mistake by James McGarry, who appeared to have it covered. And it's 113-327. to The goal coming in the 69th minute. And McGarry letting the ball in past him. And Owen Kelly with a goal and nine. So the final half a minute of this All-Ireland hurling final. That's towards TJ Reid. Aidan Fogarty will fancy there's a late, late score for him there. And it's over the bar, he was right. It's a third point for the Emeralds man. So three goals and 30 for Brian Cody's team. 113 for Waterford. We're just awaiting the final whistle. It's quite a victory for Kilkenny. There was never any doubt. The final whistle, they beat Waterford by 23 points. The management doing a terrific job. The most complete performance in an All-Ireland final that I think I have ever seen by one of the greatest teams, if not the greatest. I'll leave that to hurling historians elsewhere. There's some team, it's three in a row. Well, who's to say it won't be four in a row in 12 months' time? I think this campaign are going to be around for a while, but let's hope, and every other county will respond, um, including Offaly and Wexford in Leinster. They're not going to lie down, and um, look, well done to Kilkenny, great win. Well, Kilkenny took the lead in the first minute, and this is how it all finished. Final score, Kilkenny, three goals and 30 points. Waterford, a disappointing one goal and 13. That was the last shot. Pasha Chap is back. It's a great Kilkenny moment. Nicky Brennan, Kilkenny man, to Char Fitzpatrick. Kilkenny are the All-Ireland champions for the 31st time. Kilkenny have just done the three in a row. The 2008 Hurling Championship started with speculation on whether Kilkenny could achieve a three in a row, and if someone was to stop them, who might it be? In the end, there was to be no denying Kilkenny, as they brushed aside the challenges they met from Offaly, Wexford, Cork and Waterford. Kilkenny achieved their three in a row, and they overtook rivals Cork to head the role of honour. Add in the widespread accolades for hurling performances of a standard never seen before, as well as a clean sweep of titles at all levels, and this really was Kilkenny's year.